Yo, what up? In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to securely work with secure data in Next.js 13, the client and server side components. They've been out for like a couple weeks, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to securely work with data so you don't accidentally leak anything to your client, which would be kind of bad. So let's get right into it. So here we are in a brand new, well, not quite brand new, but in a rather new Next.js 13 application. And by the way, if you're wondering how to do this, you can go into your command prompt and then type npx create next dash app at latest dash dash experimental dash app. And that's how you create, you know, like a newest version 13 app that also has the um, characteristic app folder instead of, or, you know, in addition to the pages folder. Now, to really understand how to work with secure data in these components, let's take a look at how you would um, go about data fetching the old way, right? So, oh, actually, and let me make the code a bit larger for you. So in the Next.js 12, and let me turn off GitHub Copilot, there we go. You would have an export function, get server side props, that could receive a context as the first um, argument right here. We don't worry about that right now. Let's say cons title is equal to hello world. And then we would normally return that title as an object like uh, props, that props is an object and that object has the title inside of it. That title would then get passed to the props of the page that we have typed here. Now that's only relevant if you're using TypeScript. If not, then you don't need to worry about that. And essentially, um, when we start the server, then we see the oh we see the page because we need to go to slash old and there we see hello world. So um, we get the hello world from the server, pass it to the client, then it gets rendered on the client. Now the new way of doing this does not involve any like anything like that. So we don't pass any props and we can uncomment this because this is how we will do it. The title is gonna be await get title and we're gonna mark the main page as asynchronous. Now that is very, very different. We couldn't do that before Next.js 13. Now the type changes. So you can see we have a promise of an um, JSX element. So we can say we are not receiving any props, but then we can copy the type from here. Uh, we can say promise, and that is promising a JSX dot element. Now, it does not know what the get title is, so we also want to uncomment that. There's also an asynchronous function that mocks an API delay right here. And then after one second returns the string old to the client um, right here. So not through the props, but we actually get it inside of the um, component itself. Now, if we save that, get rid of the unused import, save that, you will see what happens. We get an error that says, Object are not valid as a React child, found object promise. Why is that happening? Well, because the old way of doing things, which we are doing because we're in the pages directory, so everything still works the old way in this directory, doesn't work. Now, if you do the same thing in the app directory though, so if we go to the page and then say, cons fetch data is asynchronous, it's a function, and then we can just copy the delay from here and insert it here, we say await, delay, let's do one second, and then we return the string hello world. And now in here we can say const data is equal to fetch data. Now that's what we need to await because this function is asynchronous and we also need to mark this as asynchronous to be able to await. Now that changes the type again, so it's not gonna be FC anymore, but it's gonna be an object that is of type page props. And essentially we are returning a promise and we are promising, what are we promising? Well, a JSX, oops, JSX dot element. There we go. And uh, that's what we can do. So we can insert the data here and it should say, hello world, when we go to the normal page. So navigate away from the old page, go to the normal one and here we can see, okay, hello world, hello world. This works properly. Now, if we wanted to do this with an environment variable, like an API key, so with secure information, I think it makes sense to take a look at how we will do that. So let's have a .env.local, and inside of this, we will define an API key, 
And let's just um, call the API key one, two, three. We can close the old one. I just want to show you what happens. And now in here, by default in Next.js, these are server components. So that means instead of having the uh, get server side props, essentially, this is one big ass get server side props. So we can work with the API key. We can say API key and then say, um, just log it out to the console, process.env.api underscore key. Save that page and you can see in the console, API key one, two, three, because we have access to the API key on the server side. We don't have access to the API on the client side. So what we couldn't do is say, um, for instance, const data is equal to process.env.api underscore key. So technically that should be one, two, three, right? Um, so data would be one, two, three, but instead what we get is, oh, we still, we still get that because we are still on the server. Now, if you were to turn this into a client component though, so use client, because we are rendering this on the server, it's totally safe to do that. Now, if we were using a client component by changing that, we would get an error. Objects are not valid as a React child found object promise. So it won't let us work with um, API keys on the front end. Now, if this was a next underscore public API key though, let's change that next underscore public. I didn't prepare for this example, but I'm very curious to see what happens. Uh, let's reload the page and that still doesn't work. Interesting. Param is undefined. Okay, interesting. I thought that that could actually work. Um, but the, the point I wanted to show you is that we cannot work with secure data when we turn stuff into a client component. Now, how do we work with secure data though, if we want client components? Because, well, I've got the documentation open here on my left. And as you can see, um, they've got a little chart when you might want to use client components. And uh, the most common use case is like, you know, having state on click on change things that you have in uh, Next.js or React a lot. So if we want to have state right here, say number, set number, it's a number. And number is zero by default, we need to import the state. Say we wanted to have some interactivity in this client, right? How would we go about fetching data then, even though this is marked as a client component? And I think the best thing you could do for that is having a utils folder. Let's call it getData.ts. And essentially what we're doing is abstracting the logic we have right here, the fetch data inside a different file. And you'll see the reason we're gonna do that in a second. So let's call it export constant get data. It's an async function. And uh, essentially what we can do is just return a string that says, hello world. So just say, this is the data we're fetching. Now on the front end, um, oh, and also we probably want to log out the process.env.api key because you'll like, uh, in reality, you'll be using this to make a request to some kind of service. Uh, we're just logging it out to prove that you can actually uh, use it. So I don't have to, you know, create a whole API integration, but it's essentially the same thing. We're just logging it out. Um, now what you can't do is doing something like this. So const data is equal to get data um, because we're still trying the same thing, right? Um, data is a, a promise of a string. So we also need to await the data. Uh, what happens if we save this? Well, um, nothing changes. We're still getting the same error. Now, if you wanted interactivity in this client though, the way to go is creating a different component for that, marking that as a client component and then passing the data from the server to the client component. So let's create a folder called components. Let's call this component hello world.tsx, initialize a functional component and that component can receive the message and that message will be a string. So we're, what we want to do is pass this message right here to this client component. So use client that also has interactivity, something like a state. So number set number, it's going to be a number, it's going to be zero, import the use state. So essentially uh, the same thing as we wanted to do here. Now we remove the interactivity from the server component that we're going to make now to the client component, and then we can pass the data to the client component. So we can say, hello world, and that hello world we need to import, it expects a message, 
And that message can be the data that we await right here at the top level of the component, which was not possible um, before Next.js 13. Now we turn this into a server component, this into a client component, and we have interactivity on the client and we are working with the secure data on the server components. Now we can reload the page and we can see that hello world does render, uh, but we do want to render the message in here uh, just to show you that it works. We can reload and we see hello world. So the secure data we get from right here, or we could even pass the process.env.api key itself, which will be one, two, three. Uh, now this doesn't work, but we can just um, hold up. Can we just, yeah, okay. We can just do that. And you can see we pass the API key to the front end. Now that is not something you'd, you'd normally do, um, but just to prove you can work with secure data here and then um, pass it from a server component to a client component. And that's how you work with secure data. Now, one very important step would be to declare this get data as a special file. And that is why we created a separate file for it. So in the official Next.js documentation, they recommend a package called npmi server dash only. And what that does is instead of the error that we get when um, trying to load data on a client component. Um, let's just comment that out for a second, say hello in here. So we turn this back into a client component and trying to work with secure data, which won't work, but it won't work after we start the server. Let's reload the page, give it a second. And now that's gonna throw a lot of errors. Um, and if you're working with other developers, it makes a lot of sense to import the server own, oops, server, only up here in the get data. So that way, when we reload the page, it's a way, way better error message. As you can see, it says you're importing a component that needs server only. So this would be right here. That only works in a server component, but one of its parents is marked with use client. So it's a client component. So it's a very verbose error message. It's telling us we are trying to work with secure data that the client should not have access to so the process.env.api key on a client component, which would you know cause a data leak, which we really want to avoid. So it tells us either you're not allowed to do that, or um, it, it you know it even gives you a list of uh, one of these is marked as a client entry. So that's really helpful as well. So it tells us abstract that interactivity away, so we can turn this into a server component and then pass the data we get from fetching into a client component. So the client never gets access to any of our secure data, except if we literally pass it to the client component, but that's not what, what you would normally do. And uh, that way you can work with secure data in Next.js 13 without leaking any information to the client. Now, what I really like about Next.js uh, in general, not only 13, is that working with secure environment variables is pretty uh, intuitive and easy. So even in Next.js 12, if you were to say process.env.api key on the front end, it would still um, not leak the information to the client. It would just return undefined for the environment variables. Now, that is all I wanted to um, show you in this video. That's pretty much it. If you are interested in environment variables, I've done a video on that uh, in the past. I'm going to link it to you in the video description. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you a lot of fun, a lot of fun um, working with secure data in your next project. See you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.